Edie and Craig are going to do this one together. Edie has been a cartographer and a writer at Esri since 1996. She's also a recipient of the National Geographic Society Award in Cartography and is the co-author of the book Cartographica Extraordinaire. Craig is a product engineer lead at, um, at Esri doing ArcGIS desktop and enterprise products. He has interests in text placement, map symbolization, visualization, and 3D cartography. Craig's day-to-day -day work involves working on new cartographic software development, but he occasionally finds the time to make a map or two. So take it away. All right, thanks. We're going to tag team this. I'm going to do a little intro and a little demo, and then um, Edie's going to take over and bring us home. Um, we're talking about making great symbols in ArcGIS Pro. This slide deck I just tweeted, it's up here on speaker deck. So when we talk about symbols in ArcGIS Pro, we're primarily talking about symbols that are classified by geometry type, points, lines, polygon, mesh for some of our 3D usage, and text. And these are built from symbol layers, marker, stroke, fill, procedural would be a specialized 3D type. And you can customize these symbols with symbol effects and marker placements, which we'll talk about for quite a bit in this, uh, in this talk. Um, there's some advanced functionality. You can connect symbol properties to attributes, so you can do some data-driven uh, applications. And you can adjust size by um, scale. That was some of the, the functionality that Kate talked about in her talk. The, the main key thing here is that symbols allow us to define an appearance and then apply it to a large number of features, which is really key for GIS workflows where you have large volumes of data, you want to control how that data is symbolized, and you spend a lot of time in your symbol configurations. So symbol layers are really the building blocks of symbols, and then symbol effects operate on symbol layers or at the whole symbol level, and we'll demonstrate this. Um, another key part is that symbol effects sometimes can change the geometry type. We call those shape shifters uh, informally and on our team. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that as well. The most basic example of how a symbol is structured in ArcGIS Pro, this is slightly different than in ArcMap, um, a polygon symbol would be made up of two layers. One of those layers in this example is a solid stroke, that's the outline, and then we have a solid fill, that's the green fill. In ArcMap, that actually would have been just one layer with the stroke and fill embedded on it. But this breakdown of having these symbol layers be more primitives uh, makes it more flexible for us down the line. So I'm going to move into demonstration, bounce out here to ArcGIS Pro. And I have a really, really basic map here showing four different lines. At first glance, they may look really, really similar to each other. But they're actually not. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit and talk about one of our most basic effects, and that's the dash effect. And it's so commonly used that we add it to every stroke by default in the user interface. And you can see here that we have several different options for our dash effects. At the top, we're starting the dash with a full gap. So you can see this gray line represents the geometry, the line that we're actually symbolizing. It starts out with a full gap. I can also start with a full pattern. I can start with a half gap or I could start with a half pattern. So we have a lot of different configuration capabilities available on each effect, and this dash effect is just one of the more basic um, effects that we can see. And you know, why would I really want to manage all those endings on my, on my dashes? If you come here to this example, let me turn off the, uh, the background layer. We have the intersection, maybe for a boundary, of some dashed lines, and you see how prominent this intersection is because we have full dashes at the intersection. And really, it's bringing attention to that. You may not want to bring attention to that, to that specific area. If I actually make that a half pattern, you'll see that it's significantly lighter because we only have a half pattern making that, that line cross in the center. So a lot of configuration capabilities here with um, effects in um, ArcGIS Pro. Now, in addition to effects, we also have a concept called marker placements. Marker placements are useful for things like uh, placing you know, these cold front markers along a line if I'm doing a, a meteorological map. So I can specify that I want this triangle repeated at a certain uh, distance on the map, and I want it to be aligned with the line. 
Another, op another uh, different approach would be something where I want the marker symbol placed at a distance, but I want it to remain horizontal. So in this case, we have a route that turns, and you can see that the symbol uh, of um, this marker symbol on it is actually staying horizontal as it moves um, from vertical to horizontal. So those are just different capabilities with uh, marker placements in ArcGIS Pro. And then I'll show a more complex symbol type. This is a single symbol that uh, if I open up the symbology pane for it, you'll see that it has three symbol layers. It has the shape marker. This shape marker is placed at the center of the polygon. It has a solid stroke, that's the outline here. And then it has a solid fill. And this marker placement here, I could place uh, this at the centroid or use various other algorithms to, um, to repeat this or place it, you know, repeating would be common if I'm doing something like a, a map of orchards. So these are just the basic effects and marker placements in ArcGIS Pro. Now I'll move on to a, a slightly more complex example, which would be something that changes shape. So what I have here is I have the Salmon River in New York State, and I'm going to open up uh, the symbol properties for this. And I'm actually going to add a global effect. And you can see here the list of effects in, in ArcGIS Pro, and I'm going to add the tapered polygon effect. And when I add that and come back to the basic properties of the symbol, you can see it's added the tapered polygon effect options. I can choose to make this, uh, say, a five-point five start, and I'll apply that. And you'll see that I've now tapered this polygon, but it's just drawing the outline. Why is it just drawing the outline? Well, I don't have a fill layer on this symbol now. I took something that had a solid stroke, converted it to a polygon, that solid stroke became the outline of that polygon. So I can just add a fill layer, and I can actually turn off the stroke, and then I'll change the color of the fill. And you can see here I have a tapered polygon drawn there now. So that's an example of a global effect where the first thing the symbol does is convert the geometry type from a line to a polygon, and then I can symbolize it as a polygon uh, from then on out. Now, we talked a lot about lines and polygons here. Um, point symbols would be another uh, case where you may want to um, do some modification of uh, out-of-the-box symbols. What I have here is a map I saw in a Boeing brochure that was advertising, and I'm not kidding, it was a Montreal example to begin with, um, all the places where the Dreamliner, the variations of the Dreamliner aircraft could reach flying out of the Montreal airport. Um, so I have an equidistant azimuthal projection here, and you can see all these distances of the various uh, Dreamliner configurations. But I may want to change this, this star here to another symbol. And one of the more common ways you would want to bring in uh, exterior graphics is as SVG. So in ArcGIS Pro, I can now import actually the logo for the Montreal airport. You can see here in the preview. I can see the logo, and I may want to change the color here once I've imported it um, to be the official color of the Montreal airport, which I happen to have memorized. And there we go, we've uh, changed this symbol, updates on the map. I can then make further um, modifications to this symbol, maybe fix some of the figure ground issues, and, and so on. So that's just a quick overview of effects and placements in ArcGIS Pro, and how you can use those to build uh, symbols in your map. Now, Edie's gonna talk about organizing those symbols, and I'll turn it over to her for the remainder of the presentation. Okay, thanks, Craig. So symbols are really uh, powerful in ArcGIS Pro. Craig just showed you a quick overview. Um, but the other thing we can talk about is styles, and styles are collections of symbols. And styles are how we organize our work in ArcGIS Pro. So it's not just symbols, it's actually all of your map assets. All the colors you use in ArcGIS Pro can be stored in styles, color schemes, label placements, all the things you put on your layout. Styles are a really good way to organize yourself and promote consistency across your work. 
Um, so it, it's kind of good to learn about them. They're sort of uh, optional. You're not forced to use styles, but it's, it's a good way to keep your work organized. So there's a notion of system styles in ArcGIS Pro. System styles are those styles that are included with the install of ArcGIS Pro. And the system styles, we are um, always looking to uh, increase what we have in there and balance it with the size of the download. But we offer a lot with the download, but they're not all added to your project automatically. So what we call project styles are the styles that are linked to your project. And if you share your project, those styles will go with them. So it's a good way to coordinate with your colleagues when you um, share those projects if you're working with styles. So there's a number of different ways to add styles to your project. You can search for some online. You can add the system styles. I'm not going to go through all of that. Um, what I've got here as a screenshot on the slide is a little tip that not a lot of people find. Um, when you're in a gallery, all of the things that are in the gallery are not hard-coded. You control what's in the gallery. So anything that's in the gallery is from the project styles. So the styles you choose to be in the project. Um, so you can search those project styles, or you can even search all styles, which means searching all of the styles that Esri makes available. And sometimes that means you find some cool stuff that's not actually part of your project. And when that happens, just hover over next to the style name like I have in the screenshot, and you'll see an add style connection. And that's a quick shortcut way to add that style to your project. So you'll start seeing the things in that style um, in your galleries. So if you used ArcMap, you might have known about the style manager. We've made styles uh, a little bit more accessible in Pro. We call them now sort of a first class citizen. They're a project item. You use the catalog view in ArcGIS Pro to manage them. And it's a little bit more visual. It's got a lot more um, functionality that's easier to find. One of the really good use cases is taking our symbols that we provide, all the Esri symbols are read-only, but it's very easy to just grab them, copy them into your own styles, and then you can modify, copy those symbols into your own styles and modify them as you like. We have a concept called a favorites style. If you are an ArcMap user, this is synonymous with your personal style. Your favorite style is linked to your profile, not to the map itself. It's a great place to um, sandbox some things, try some things out. Also quickly use your favorite colors, maybe your corporate colors, whatever, uh, from project to project because it's based on your profile, not, not the project. Um, so anytime you are working with any symbol, you've made something really complicated, maybe set up all those effects like Craig was talking about, save it to your style and then you can reuse it. You can modify it from there. Another tip and trick here is um, working with your ArcMap styles. So styles in ArcMap and styles in Pro are a little bit different. They're both databases, but the underlying uh, database behind it is different. So ArcMap styles are a .style file. ArcGIS Pro styles are a .stylex file. If you have a lot of work invested in your ArcMap styles, never fear, it's a very simple import. So you just want to import those styles and all of your symbology will come across. Like Craig mentioned, we're using a new symbol model, but that import is a really great way to get all of those ArcMap symbols into uh, ArcGIS Pro. And if you were a representation user, if you had a lot of symbols set up as representations in ArcMap, all of those will be converted to ArcGIS Pro symbols. So all the representation effects and marker placements, all of that work you might have put in will, will come in. Um, so I just want to recap. I've thrown out a couple terms here. Uh, Craig has all these slides loaded, so you don't need to scribble this down if it's interesting to you. But system styles are the ones that we provide. They're read-only. Favorite style, that's your own style that's linked to your profile. Custom style is any other style that you made or you get. 
Um, we have a number of solution styles for specific industries that we don't include with the download to keep the install small, but if you search online, um, just in, in your portal, search all portal, usually if you just search for star.stylex, that's the best way to find them. Um, and yeah, that's, there's lots more out there and it's a great way to share them as well, to uh, share your styles you've made with your colleagues. So that's what we got. <laughs>